This slide illustrates how that sample data set called VS1D MASW.DAT was generated. First, it was assumed there were total eight field records generated with all this source receiver configuration, but all of them were formatted and combined into one file called VSMASW.DAT. So whenever you import this sample data set, you have to choose formatted seismic data, not SEG2 seismic data. And this shows source receiver configuration used to model individual field records included in the sample data. First, 24 channel receiver array stayed at the same place all the time. And this is channel number one location and channel number 24 location here. And there were a uh, total of four different source offsets were uh, used on this side, which is for the shot because this is the channel number one location. And then another four different source offsets were assumed on the other side, which is reverse side of the uh, receiver array. So total eight field records were generated. And this chart illustrates relative location of receivers and source for eight different field records. And this table shows the summary of all that information. Go to set up source receiver here and then choose from formatted seismic data vs 1dmasw.dat and then run wizard and I confirm that a total eight records in the input file distance unit was meter so I move to next and it was active data and the receiver array was 1D receiver array, which was a linear receiver array. And receiver spacing was 1 meter. So whenever you need to change any number, you just select a number and you just type in like this. Uh, meter, receiver spacing. So this first file, record number 1, the source location was off the first channel. So I choose this one. And then I know the first record the source offset was a 1 meter. So I confirm this is correct. And then only source moved and receiver array stayed at the same place. So I select this one. And the, the direction of source move was away from the receiver array. So I select this one. And for the next record, the source offset was a 6 meter. So it moved by 5 meter from current location. So I type in 5 here like this. And then this is where I actually uh, specify field coordinate. Here the last channel's location I put 0 meter and uh, the distance increases this direction. And then for this uh, station numbers, I would write in code like this, 1024 here and then 1023 here. Whenever you update any numbers within these four edit boxes, you have to press enter a few times so that uh, all the other coordinates and uh, station numbers can be updated. And these station numbers are not important. It is another reference coordinate, but um, it has to be in consecutive numbers. Whereas this distance coordinate, it always increases by one receiver spacing. And then move to next one. And I review all this information. And I confirm everything is correct and move to next. And then here, I have to choose begin and end the record numbers for the setup that I specified so far. It is going to be only from record number 1 to 2 because from record number 3 the configuration will change again. So I run it and specify off of name and then it shows this chart. Here I confirm 
this is correct this is the way I want it to encode so I close this one and then it informs me to select next two records that I'm going to encode that setup so it is going to be from record number three to four and then I go back to this location and then still I'm on the uh, folder side so source is is still off the first channel so this is correct selection and then I know the file record number three the source offset was a 12 meter so I type in 12 and this is correct and this is correct too only source moved and source moved away from the receiver array and by how much record number three had a source offset of 12 meter and then next record record number four had source offset of 24 so it moved by 12 meter like this and this is a surface coordinate which should not change so I confirm this is correct I review this one and then run and it shows me the chart again this is the way I want in the twin code so I close this one and now I'm going to choose the next two records which will be 5 and 6 and now I go back to location here and now I know the source location for this record number 5 was off the last channel so I have to select this one okay and I know the f file number 5 the source offset was 1 meter so I type in 1 so I confirm this is correct and I choose this one because only source moved and source moved away from the receiver array so I click this one by how much the next record which will be record number 6 the source offset was a 6 meter so from here it moved by 5 meter like this and now this shows the coordinate uh, flipped because I switched the, uh, the source location and this should be 23 that was the original coordination that I chose so and this should be 22 and the station number was correct it started from 1001 at channel number one so this is correct now I run it now it shows this source locations on reverse side of the receiver array this receiver array the channel number one location is here on the right side so I confirm this is correct I close it and now I choose the last two records of 7 and 8 like this and go back to location and it's of the source is still off the last channel and I know for record number 7 the source offset was 12 meter this is correct and this is correct too and away from the receiver array it moved by how much it moved another 12 meter like this and this is the correct coordination that I selected at the beginning so next I review and next and run so this is correct this is the way I want it from the beginning so this is the end of the uh, source receiver setup for VS1DMASW.DAT. Now the program informs me the process will move to the next step which is a dispersion image generation and I click OK. And then I click run image generation. So it generates dispersion images. And it's done. And now uh, it will move to the second step of dispersion analysis which is uh, the extraction of dispersion curves from the uh, 
generate the dispersion images. Now it tells me input file has the dispersion images for the same surface location, which is correct. Would you like to stack them? So I click yes. Now it shows the stack the dispersion image from which I'm ready to extract the dispersion curve. First click bounds. Then I click several points along this trend. Okay, and then uh, it's extract. Now I save it. Now it asks me if I want to move to the uh, next step, which will be inversion. Yes. I go to run. Yes, I confirm. And now it calculates final shear wave velocity profile. So this is the first output from that automatic uh, inversion. So I can take this as the final output uh, or I can go further to find a better match the dispersion curves, this is uh, velocity and this is frequency here. Uh, both curves show a match very closely and on top, okay, it shows this match. It's the 88.18% match. So I remember that and, and see if my manual change increases the match. Okay, now I move like this. Now it, it changed, it increased that uh, match a little bit and now I change it like this. It decreased, it does not change, it decreased again. And uh, so I move like this and it keeps increasing now, okay, decrease. And then I can actually run the automatic inversion again by going into here and run. Okay, it showed 87 like this. Probably this looks more realistic. So now I uh, take this as my final output. So save here. Call it as a manual final output. Okay, now I'm done.